Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and it's Monday, December 6, 2021, and I'm here for my weekly cross-stitching update. I have the camera angled down just a little bit in case Smokey decides to come up and hang out with us today. So let's get going. It was a pretty good week for stitching, not amazing. Um, Thursday and Friday, I didn't get a lot of stitching time because I had a ladies Christmas dessert at church and I had to set up for it on Thursday and then go to it on Friday. So those days, I think Thursday, I, I'm trying to think, Friday I think I only had travel stitching and Thursday I might have had a little bit of something else, but I didn't do my knitting woman stitches. So minimal stitching on those days, but there were some other days that were good. So I have things to share. Uh, let's see, travel stitching, exciting news as far as travel stitching goes. You may have seen this on Instagram, but first things first, I'll do my temperature typography, which is the temperature piece I'm doing this year. You can find this in my Etsy shop along with some other ones. I'll be doing the butterflies this coming year. Speaking of butterflies, I got a wild hair. After seeing, here's Smokey. <laughs> After seeing Allie from Allie's Stitching Studio, oh my goodness, <laughs> do her year of peacocks this past, or she started in June or something and she's going through next summer. So she has a bunch of peacock charts and they're all a variety of styles. So she's been able to keep working on them without getting bored. And it's like, I wonder if I have a whole bunch of butterfly charts that are a good enough variety to do that for a year or I might, I'm, I'm curious, I might pick like a month maybe to do butterfly, the month of butterflies because a whole year I think I would get bored. But I was going through, I have like 13 or 14 charts with the butterfly in them that I can find right now. So <laughs> I guess I like butterflies, including the temperature butterflies, which I'll be stitching next year. So that might be a thing for a particular month um, to work on everything that has a butterfly in it. That'd be kind of fun. So here is my temperature typography. I finished November. This is 28 count, one over one, full crosses on a light, like pale blue mystery even weave. It got warmer at the end of November and I, not as warm as I expected. I thought we'd get some more yellows, but it was mid to high 80s and then it's cooling off again. And this week, it's warm-ish today, but this week it's supposed to get cold. <laughs> <laughs> for our area with a high in the 50s and rain which I know some places this time of year that's like a tropical heat wave <laughs> but here that's cold so maybe it'll dip hopefully dip into at least the blue dark blues and maybe even a purple that'd be fun so we'll have to wait and see but I'm on into December so home stretch and then I got my Autumn Beauties finished. Yay! I got this mostly done in the car as travel stitching. And then Sunday morning when, I, when we're driving to church, I usually work on my typography. But this week, like, I need to get this done. I do not want to carry this over another week. And I had like this much of the border left with one color. So one color of the border left in like a little stretch right here. So, all right, I'm doing this first. If I don't get to my typography, it's okay. I can catch up, but I'm finishing this. And turns out I was able to finish this in the car on the way home from church and then worked on the typography during the Broncos game in the evening. <laughs> and then was already able to start my next travel stitching project. It's so, so exciting. So here's, here's my finish of Autumn Beauties. And there's Smokey underneath there. <laughs> She's behind me, I think. This is on all the called for stuff. 14 count oatmeal Ada that you can find at the Fat Quarter Shop. It's a printed canvas, a lot like Vintage Country Mocha. And two strands over one Ada square with the called for classic color works. There's also a DMC conversion. But I liked using the fancy flosses, especially in these pumpkins stitching them kind of in curves to make them look more like pumpkins. I thought that was fun. And I am hoping to maybe to put this into a pillow. And I had one question in an email and I haven't gotten back to you, sorry. 
Um, I'll answer you soon. <laughs> it's been a busy week. My my daughter's birthday was this week too, so it was. Um, oh yeah, and I was going to show you the bookmark. I'll have to go run and grab that at the end, maybe. I fully finished that, but I I want to make this into a pillow. And what I usually do with throw pillows, what I did with my Christmas one, <laughs> is I use this as the front, and then I had like a, a an envelope fold in the back. So I had one sh one piece of fabric here, one piece of fabric here that's overlapping. So when the pillow's in it, it's a it's a overlapping, but it's it is an open gap, so you could take it off if you wanted to. And I use a pillow form you can buy instead of like stuffing it with stuffing. So I'll probably do that. With this one, it's just short of like the 12 inch mark is like right here. I'd barely have a quarter inch to do 12 inches and a 12 inch pillow is a common size. 11 inches, not so much. So I think I'm gonna probably have to put a little bit of extra fabric around the edge, likely whatever matches on the back and to make it a 12 inch pillow. So it's kind of my plan. So I don't think I'll do any any lace or decorative edging, I'll just do fabric. So that's that. And I'm so excited because I finished that and finished my typography or got caught up on that. Then I was able to start my next travel stitching, which is Peter, Peter Polar Bear of Brooks Books Advent Animals, which are free patterns. On her website you can still get them there and this is where I got to while we were Broncos game and deadliest catch yesterday so I worked on some white this is on 18 count Ada all of mine 18 count light blue Ada by Zweigart scraps from my temperature tree kits in my shop and two strands I'm not doing the borders because I'm planning to like fray the edges purposefully with like a and then sew it down on a probably candy cane colored scrapbook paper because the borders are like a candy cane backstitch and, and the numbers are also candy cane looking. So I'm thinking I'm gonna find some scrapbook paper and sew it down onto that and then fray the edges. And it's gonna be in a little flip calendar. So that's kind of my plan for that. I've already got Katie Kitty finished. And this is very close to done. I just have his other foot, the snow on the ground, and then there's a little bit of backstitching on his like toes and fingers that I haven't done yet. Everything else I had already finished before this week. So this is Katie Kitty. So you see how cute these guys are. That's done. So let's see, where's my... I'm gonna go ahead and show you the next one, which is Mary Mouse, number three. Two years ago, I worked on these for one day each for um, 25 days in July for the um, Christmas in July. It wasn't really a whole day. It was, I worked on it for one thread um, per day, just to get it started. So this is my start on Mary Mouse. So I did the dark gray and I'm excited to see I'm assuming this guy won't take too long to finish and then see how far I can get on this one before I see you again. This will be travel stitching. While I'm waiting for my kids in the pickup line and any other places that might need travel stitching. I also had a fun um, progress on my Mill Hill Monday project, which is ice crystal from the snow crystals series it's a christmas ornament and there's a bunch of different ones you can get i liked this one the best it'd be fun if i could finish it before christmas and put it up on the tree using called for everything and i got one more color finished so that's pretty fun i did the dark blue first and then i did the light blue this week and today i'll work on the white it does seem like there's a little bit more white than the other colors, so it might not take, I might not be able to get it all done today, depending on the time, but I'll at least start on the white. And it was, I was surprised at how quickly it went. So who knows, maybe I'll finish the white too. 
because then all that's left is beading. There's three colors of cross stitching and then there's just a bunch of beads. So that's really fun. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more done on that today. And I guess I can show you my regular pieces. I worked on Knitting Woman several days. Like I said, Thursday and Friday, I didn't get up, get to it, but I worked on it a little bit on Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. So this is by Golden Kite. I'm stitching this for my mom and I have a goal now to finish it next November. So that's not the right whip. And if I keep up on it, r stitching regularly, I could I can do it. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see if I can do it. So here it is compared to last time. This is 22 count Ada, two over one half stitches. There's a lot of blends, so I needed to do something with at least two strands, or with two strands, not one. And I worked, I'm picking my colors from the top down. I, one of the, um, in the comments, I was discussing with somebody my method and they recommended, I just call it the typewriter method. So I use the typewriter method with a lot of my full coverage pieces. And it's basically left to right, top to bottom, is how I choose the symbol and work it till the string runs out and then pick the next symbol top to bottom left to right so right now I've been picking symbols right up in here that's been the highest point pretty soon this will be coming in again but so far these have been higher and so I've done some yellows and some there's been something from the sh under the shadow of the shirt so I think there's some what do you call it some of the white fabric shadows have been coming in and then there's also been some yellow which is also down here and i believe a yarn ball down here and then even on sunday i did some blue in her skirt which is super fun finished a few more colors because some of those colors i only had a couple stitches of so that's always exciting to see those zeros pop up in pattern keeper here's my little kitty <laughs> Taking a bath again. Can't really see her that well, but. There she is. Okay. <laughs> now you can see Smokey a little bit more. Okay, so that's that one. And on Thursday, I worked on His Name is Jesus again while I chit chatted with Desiree, the addicted stitcher. And we're, we work on this only when we're chatting or the day that we're planning to visit so and we're trying to stay relatively similar amounts of stitches as we move forward so it's been fun to see our progress as we work on it together because we started in different places but we have the same amount of stitches so mine is 28 count ivory lugana one over one full crosses and I'm doing three different Victorian mottos and right now I was working on the name and I finished the word name one length of thread it's about what i can do in the time we stitch is one length of thread which is like this time it was about 150 stitches because they're one over one tiny stitches um and it's a yard long length of thread because it's a hand dyed and they that's just she has it cut that way already so i just go to town it varies though depending on the type of stitching how much i can get done so yeah that's fun so I enjoy seeing that come to life. <laughs> and then, let's see, now we can go into the main things I worked on at home for my home stitching. So I started out with, well, I finished the Cozy Cafe Club. I didn't bring it in, but it's thought I just had a couple stitches of white in there and I made sure to finish that before I moved on. Imagine it's finished. <laughs> Not the whole thing, but the, the November chunk. So there's one more cup from the Frosted Pumpkin Citrus Cozy Cafe Club that's gonna be released near Christmas time because they've been releasing on the 25th. The one for Thanksgiving, I believe was also on the 25th this year and they released it like two or three days early. So I'm assuming they'll do the same thing with Christmas, the December one. So. Finish that, then I could 
with a good conscience move forward into my other plans. So I had finally received the fabric for my Cottage Garden Fairy by Mirabilia and Desiree, the addicted stitcher, she was has been eager, eagerly awaiting the arrival of my fabric. It took about eight weeks. And so we had decided as soon as I got the fabric that we needed to start it. So we had to start along and this is how far I got on mine. This is Dappled Hollow 32 count by Under the Sea Fabrics. 32 count Lugana, I believe. So it's an even weave. It has plumped up quite a bit. This is a decent rendering of the color back here. Um, I started in the middle, which was right there. You can, <laughs> you can still see the bobble where my needle was poking. And I kind of did some of the lap of her skirt. And this is this, this is part of something that's on her lap. And this is her bodice and the side of her arm. So it doesn't look like a whole lot of anything, but I'm working my way up because I like to do my mirabilias that way, where I start in the middle, make sure it's centered, and then I work my way up and complete it from the top down. I like to do their face towards the beginning because that makes it really exciting for me to see the pretty face while I work on the rest of it. She's got some, her wings go even higher than her face, but I'll probably do her face and then go over to do her wings and hair. So it's probably my plan. I don't know when I'll get back to this, but I gave this portions of three days in order to get a decent amount done. I found I didn't like working on it at first because it's a 32 count and this particular piece seems to have shrunk. So I measured it. It's actually a 34 count. My I was using a size 26 needle, which I usually use on 32 count and with two strands. And <clears throat> it was really hard. <laughs> it was not fun. I couldn't find the holes with my needle because I usually just kind of feel for the hole when it's, the needle's underneath the fabric. It wasn't working so and it felt really tight but then I switched to a size 28 needle and it actually worked. So the hole the needle was small enough to find the holes and it pulled through and I made um, all the all the skin on the arm was done with my size 28 and it was a lot more enjoyable. So Going forward, that's good to know. <laughs> it's not gonna be a bear to work on because the fabric is such a pretty color. So that's good. I'm happy about that one. Got that started. And then I moved on to my official December plans starting on first. I am gonna focus on letter L fairy. I'm making this for my niece. I'm making one of these for all of my nieces for high school graduation. So I have two nieces graduating this coming June. So I've already done one. And now this is the second one for this coming summer. And I'd like to finish this now and then start a new one in January for the next niece because they just keep keep going, <laughs> they keep growing up and graduating. So um, I'm very close on this one. So I'm definitely just gonna keep going with this until it's done. And then I'll move on to my next plans in for December. So. This one, I didn't get a ton on it because of the dessert at church that I was participating in, but I did do some. So here is the letter L Fairy. This is on the called for 32 count water lily linen, two over two. And I finished all the cross stitching in the vine. There's a lot of gaps in the vine because the rest of the vine will be beads. And then I started in on the, the wings. So the, the light color of the wings is done and I just need to finish the center gap here in this darker shade where the wings overlapped. It's called for just cotton fancy floss and to be backstitched with Krynik, but I thought on all these wings it would be fun to add some blending filament. So this is two strands of cotton overdyes and one strand of blending filament. So it sparkles! You can even see the sparkle and I think I did mine. The wings on mine are extra blue because I did two strands of blending filament and one strand of cotton floss, I think. But I decided I like this look better where it's predominantly cotton and only one strand of blending filament. I'll still do the back stitching in the uh, number four braid, like it's called for. And then there's one curly Q down here. I can't remember what color that's supposed to be in. It might be brown or green or something. And then the rest of it's beads. So 
I'm excited. <laughs> this should get done this week. <clears throat> and there's two or four actually, four butterfly charms <clears throat> on here that I didn't have. And I'm trying to do most of this from stash, stitch, stitching from stash. I bought the patterns. I bought all the pieces of fabric. And because this is a nice neutral, regardless of how I want to, if I want to change any of the colors to suit my niece's taste, the same neutral is, is fine. So I've got a whole bunch of fabric, one for each one I'm going to be doing over the next several years and all the patterns I need. But I'm trying to do the floss and the beads from Stash. I have a lot. I have a lot of extra beads from doing Mirabilia's over the years. I have a lot of fancy floss. These call for crescent colors, which is now Classic Color Works. It's the same brand. And so I have a couple of them, but I'm not going to go buy them all. I have a lot of things. So I've been just subbing out what I have. And so same with the beads. And for the most part, I'm finding what I want. But when in a case like this, what treasures, I may or may not have the right treasure. And I felt like those butterflies were fun and needed because it's got little swirls of beads to show them flying. These light butterflies are discontinued. So I was unable to get those, but I bought two packages of um, this color is a darker butterfly, so all four of mine will be the same, which is fine. And they had a one, two, three stitch had another butterfly, but it was bigger, and I thought that might be a little odd. So I only got, I just got two of the same. So I'm waiting for those. I should get those in the mail soon. So hopefully by the time you see this next week, I'll have all the beading, including those little butterflies, and it'll be done. Yay! And then in January sometime, I'll start the next one, which will be the letter F. So that one, the letter F is a little more involved. This L is probably the least complicated of all of them that I've done so far. The, le the letter F might be the most. So I need to make sure I have a plan in place to get that one done next year, throughout the course of the year. So I will be focusing on that. And then I figured I'm gonna go ahead and be a good girl Rather than do my new start, I have a new start planned for December, the Christmas Elf Fairy by Nora Corbett, but I decided I'm going to do my main Christmas goal before I start that. So it'll give me motivation. So first I'm going to work on Heirloom Nativity Sampler. Assuming I can finish the Letter L Fairy this week, I'll start working on this. If I, if I work all the way through the week and finally get it done at the end of the week, I may not have any progress on this, but hopefully I you'll see something before I come back next week. I'm working on the wise men scene. Ideally, I'll finish the wise man scene and do these specialty stitch bands right here and then save their last chunk for next year. Maybe have a finish next year. That would be fun. So I'm trying to finish uh, this much. That's my goal. So if I can do that in the next you know week and a half or so, then I can start the Christmas Elf Fairy. That's my plan. So here is this one. This is on MCG, MCG Textiles 32 count linen in silver, I believe. Everything is two over two, unless it's specifically called for to be one over one or specialty stitch. Everything is beaded and specialty stitched as you go. And don't be intimidated, intimidated by this. I think it's a wonderful pattern. There's very clear instructions. And I found some of the beads that were hard to find. I found on Stony Creek's website. 123 Stitch doesn't carry the SJ Designs brand, but one, but Stony Creek does. So if you're looking for those specific ones, you can go there to find the ones you need. So yay, I'm excited to see. I'll do a close up of this section for my before maybe for next time. So hopefully I'll get a decent chunk on that done. I don't think I'll get the whole thing done this week because I know I do have a decent amount of work done on, still to go on Letter Elf Fairy, but um, hopefully I can get a nice start on this and maybe finish it the following week. And I think that's all my plans. I, I mean, all my, yeah, for this coming week, I have a couple little things I was looking into for next year's plans that I was thinking about. Working on The Knitting Woman again has made me kind of 
tease my love of full coverage again. I really want to get back to my full coverage projects. It's been a while since I worked on most of those because I've been focusing on other things. So I want to make sure I, I give them some time and attention in this coming year. So I figured I definitely want to participate in some of the full coverage fanatics challenges on Facebook. I'm part of the, now I'm part of the magazine monthly challenge group um, on Facebook and they have a monthly acrostic which you can where you can set your own goals and I think that'll be fun to do. They also have occasional more complicated challenges like bingo boards and pop-up challenges and things and those will be fun as well if I can make them work with what I'm doing. Um, I also am part of the daily, daily 30 and cross-stitch journal group which is a closed group but occasionally they'll open it up for invitation only new members. They want to keep it a certain size, so that's why it's closed. And I just joined a few months back, and I really enjoyed it for a while, but it was a, it was kind of intense <laughs> switching. Um, having the weekly goals were kind of overlapping. They were two-week goals, but there was a new one every week. So you had a, this two-week one, and then a two-week one that overlapped, and then another two-week one, and they had monthly things, and they had daily daily stitching challenges and there was a lot and I, I felt like I think that was too much <laughs> for the moment. I do I didn't don't want to leave the group in case I want to do monthly do weekly challenges again because sometimes I am in the mood for that. But they came out with a post recently for next year's yearly challenge. This year they did the zombie run, which I'm sure you've maybe heard people talk about, where they were focusing on I think four projects. And then you would folk, rotate through them if, as you finished them. So you would have to work on a certain amount of stitches on all four every month. And if you finished one, you could change it for a new one. Otherwise, you stuck with that one throughout the year and got a certain amount of stitches on it. And I thought that idea would be good. Um, so this year, they asked for three projects that I want to focus on. And they didn't give any criteria. They didn't give any theme. So it's all kind of a mystery still. But I chose Knitting Woman, because I am planning to work on that every month. And my um, Sampler of Stitches by The Drawn Thread, which I'm planning to work on at least twice a month, every other weekend, to do an alpha, a letter of the alphabet every week, every other week. And then I threw in my Mill Hill for the third one, because my Hummingbird Mill Hill is the one I have now. Well, I'm working on the Snowflake one. I have my Hummingbird one going, which I'll get back to in January. So that's I put the Hummingbird in there. Because when that one's done, I'll probably throw in another mill hill. I'll always have that going. So I put those three as my main focus pieces, I guess, because regardless of whatever what, whatever other plans I think of for the month, I'll probably always get to those throughout the month. So I thought that was good. But I knew I wanted to also have something in the full coverage group. So I went over there and I looked to see what they have going for 2022. And there's some things that are more than I want to commit to counting wise because I don't I have a lot of full coverage projects so I'm not going to get I don't want to focus in on one or even get you know a thousand stitches even on all of them because that's way too much that I then I can, can commit to and so there are a couple of them though that I think would be doable and so the first one is the non-counting challenge which they have a theme for every month so I was thinking I could just pick one at least Sometimes I can't help myself and I pick two, but for because I have all, so many other projects, I think I'm going to pick one per month, make sure I can get to that in the month. I think that would be fun. At least get 12 worked on that way. And then they also had a stitch, stitch around Germany thing throughout the month, which they have, you can choose either hours or stitches for like in between the different legs of the city for biking, I believe. And so, so like you, you would either how many hours it would, or how many hours it would take to bike from one city to the next, or I think it was 120 stitches per hour pace for um, the stitch count. So what I was going to do, since all of my full coverage pieces are in Pattern Keeper, I'm going to do the stitch count. And when I pick a full coverage project during the year, I will make that for that next number my goal on that project. So 
this can be multiple projects. You just have to have this within the leg needs to be the same project. So there are some that are really big. So for those, I would need to maybe get creative or, or have a focus week or something. But if they're smaller, I think it'd be doable. I could say, okay, well, this week I'm going to work on this piece. So I'll make sure I get at least 580 stitches on it before I put it away. And that'll be a nice little small goal and then I can check it off, you know, and I think that'd be fun. So I could somehow work my way through, hopefully, all of my full coverage pieces throughout the year by using this. And I think that'd be kind of fun. So those are the two things that I was thinking of playing with this year or in full coverage fanatics to make sure I get to all of them. So I think that's everything. Yay. Oh yeah. I don't know where she put it. I'll have to show you the bookmark I made my daughter next week. Cause I don't know where she put it. <laughs> I have gifted it, gifted it to her, but I stuck it. It was stitched on perforated paper and I stuck it between two self sticking laminate sheets for her so that it's a more hardy, bookmark to be um she won't snag the stitches or get them dirty so um but I don't know where she put it so I will try to get it from her next weekend and ready to go for my video on Monday next week <laughs> so I can show you what that looks like all the way complete so I think with that I will say goodbye and Smokey's having a nice nap now <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoy your December and happy stitching. Bye.